I recently bought a complete manual CX-5 to install its transmission into my Mazda 3. After a few setbacks, I was finally able to install the Mazda 3 transmission in the CX-5, just to realize the axles are not the same length and size. Alright, so we're getting back into the transmission swap for the Mazda 3. I'm happy because I finally got the replacement for the release bearing and it is the right part. Uh, like I mentioned in the previous episode, I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to do with the axles yet. I still have to look a little bit more into them. Uh, I'm going to start off by trying to see if I can just swap them over if they would bolt up to the old hub. Uh, if not, we're probably going to have to go custom axles. And with the release bearing, I can now install the transmission in the Mazda 3 and kind of get a few things done from there. Alright, so the transmission is installed in the Mazda 3. Now basically it's just a matter of what to do with the axle situation. I finally took out the axle from the hub. With that done, I can now compare the axles properly and see the differences uh, in size. Unfortunately, the CX-5 axle doesn't go in the hub for the Mazda 3. It's the same scenario. The axle is still bigger than the factory Mazda 3 axle so we'll have to figure something out with that uh, on a side note I'm really happy I did uh, change the throw out bearing uh, on both of them actually this one is from the Mazda 3 there is quite a lot of loose and quite a lot of slack in it and you can definitely hear it um, hear the wear in it so happy I changed that probably have to do a clutch eventually uh, but for now, the throttle bearing's good enough. So with the axles, uh, comparing them, trying to figure out what to do, one of my friends did mention that I should check out the Mazda Speed axles because they are bigger than the factory Mazda 3. So since I do have the Mazda Speeds and I do have an extra set of axle, I took a look to compare and to see if they would fit. Unfortunately, it's not the same platform and it's not the same uh, generation. It's part of the MZR generation. The axle length is not the same. The axle size is very close to the CX-5 size. But uh, again, the CX-5 is still a little bit bigger than the Mazda Speed's uh, axle. So that's not working. And even with the inter uh, intermediate shaft, um, it doesn't fit uh, the the bolt location is not the same so that's that wouldn't work uh, to go that route 
All right, so after doing a whole bunch of research on axle size and length and basically the different type of uh, spline uh, that different types of Mazda have, I came to the conclusion that the Mazda 3 2.5 has 31 spline on the transmission side and uh, 28 on the, uh, uh, the hub side. So from what I understand, it looks like maybe the 2.5 axle might bolt up directly to my Mazda 3 into the transmission. It would go in the transmission. I'm just not sure about the, um, the hub if it's because the 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 end is a little bit different than the second gen compared to the third gen uh, that and the driver side length is about nine millimeter longer on the third gen Mazda 3 2.5 so essentially what i want to do is check the uh, fitment to see if it works and since i do have a 2.5 third generation Mazda 3 uh, that I can use. I'm going to take apart the axle, test fit it on mine and put it back together. And that way I'll know if I just ordered 2.5 axles and basically bolt it up to my car, or if I have to figure out a different uh, way to go at this. So I just finished trying to install the 2.5 axle from the third gen Mazda 3 on the driver's side of my Mazda 3. So the transmission side of things, it bolts, uh, I shouldn't say it bolts up, like it goes in, no problem. Uh, for the hub side of things, it is a 28 spline, so it does go in, um, but the hub and end of the axle are made a little bit different whereas when the actual nut is tightened I think the rest of the axle or whatnot is uh, hitting the back plate of the hub uh, so that basically makes the axle that you can't turn it because uh, it's, it's making contact and on top of that the length of the third uh, the third gen axles are 9 to 10 mil longer than the second gen for the driver's side. Uh, so that's making an effect that like I can't even put the axle uh, in the hub if the axle is in the transmission. Uh, so that's where I am. Uh, it gave me some pretty good information as far as I know that the 2.5 axle does go in the transmission. Um, the hub side of things, I don't really think I can use it because not only that, the, uh, where the spline for the axles are for the second gen, it's a lot more pushed out of the hub to have proper contact, uh, with it. While as the third gen, it's, it's a lot more in. So if I were to put a third gen axle into it, uh, the contact where the spline would actually be in contact with the, the hub would be half the contact. So I don't think that would be good in the long run. Uh, it could add risk to potentially stripping uh, the, the hub spline or whatever from the axle. So I don't know if that's something I'd want to do. And on top of that, I'd have to probably shave part of the axle. So I'm not sure about that. At least it's nice that now I know that the third gen 2.5 axle does bolt up to the transmission. The length for the passenger side with the intermediate shaft, supposedly it's pretty much the same length as the second gen Mazda 3. So it sounds like I could be using that. It's just, again, the end on the hub side uh, that it's not quite the same. So I got to figure that out. For the driver's side axle, 
I ended up using the Mazda 3 inner race with the CX-5 cage and the CX-5 balls. That way the CX-5 housing fits without any loose in it. All right, so we're finally making some progress on the Mazda 3 axles. I'm honestly super excited about that. I finally got the driver's side axle fitted. It's installed, that's set. So now to the passenger side, which is a little bit more tricky because there's the um, intermediate shaft. So in front of me, I got four sets of different types of axle. I got the factory Mazda 3 axle, the factory Mazda CX-5 axle. I also took out the Mazda Speed axle from the white Mazda Speed 3 I had. And I also got a Mazda 3 third generation 2.5 axle. So the 2.5 Mazda 3 axle, I really thought it was gonna fit. Uh, lengthwise, uh, the spec said they would. Uh, unfortunately the shaft that is fixed so from the transmission to I guess the bearing mount it's actually longer on the 2.5 axle uh, so I'm assuming maybe the, the way it, it mounts on the uh, engine it might be a little different location I noticed that the uh, bearing uh, hanger wasn't didn't have the exact same holes as uh, both the CX-5 and the Mazda 3. That's why I have the Mazda Speed axle because now it's basically an issue of length. Now I have the Mazda CX-5 uh, intermediate shaft taken out. So I got the axle taken out of that. Um, my issue is if I were to take the Mazda 3 shaft, the area where it's flexible, uh, it's not the same length as the CX-5. But now if I just compare it to the Mazda Speed, it seems like the Mazda Speed's shaft is a little bit longer than the Mazda 3 Sky Active, which might be able to get me the length I'm looking for and to potentially install it on the CX-5 shaft. So basically that's where I am. I'm gonna take those apart, compare it, try to make it fit. If it does, that means we can install the axle, put the car back together, and hopefully go for a drive. When I started taking the Mazda Speed CV joint apart, I quickly realized they weren't going to work with the CX-5 ones. So I ended up risking it for the length. Doing the same thing I did for the driver's side, keeping the inner race from the Mazda 3, but using the CX-5 cage, balls, and housing.
All right, so the car is dropped on the ground. There's oil in the transmission. The axles are in the car. I think the car might just be able to drive out. Um, it's pretty late. It's 10 o'clock at night. I was really trying to get this car going. The only drawback is that the axle is about 25 millimeter shorter than the regular Mazda 3 axle. So it is going to be a little bit stretch. Um, so it is going to wear out the axle and I'm hoping, I'm hoping that it won't just pop out either when I drive the car. From looking at the car, the fact that the car is actually lowered might be in my favor in the fact that uh, from the factory, if I'm looking at the suspension geometry with the car that's sitting right now on the ground, the axle from the factory looks like it would uh, slant a little bit down. Uh, so with the car being lowered, it's actually very straight right now. So the axle is very straight. So that means that having the axle straight pushes the axle inside um, i do have to consider that going over bumps and driving on the road it is going to move but i think just in in a regular position neutral it might be in my favor that the car is lowered obviously that's something we'll have to see and only time will tell maybe i drive down the street and the axle pops out or i can drive it for a little while and get uh figure some buy myself some time to figure out this axle issue so basically that's where i am i'm about to start the car see if it can drive out of the uh workspace and uh basically go from there all right let's see if it works Okay, is it gonna move? <laughs> the car's gonna. All right. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. That's amazing. That is legit amazing. All right, guys, so as you can see, the car's driving, it's running. I'm so excited to have the car out of storage. Uh, the weather's been beautiful for the past month, month and a half, and I've been wanting to drive my car for so long. And uh, I'm really excited to finally drive it. So I can't wait to go for a drive with it. Um, I'm so excited. Uh, for sure, I'm going to bring you guys along for the first drive and to see how it feels, to see the headers and to see the transmission, how it how it's going to react to the car, how the gear ratio is going to improve the acceleration, hopefully, and just make an overall better feeling car. Uh, I think that's where I'm going to leave it for now for this episode. Next episode, we're going to be in the car. We're going to be driving, see how it feels. In the meantime, if you'd like to go check out the full build series for this particular car, you can check out part one right here. And we'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.